we are in the birthplace of a god. Worshipped by millions all around the world, a deity that many spend fortunes chasing and lifetimes hunting. This is the Holy Land where millions come to worship every year. No, we're not in Israel or the Vatican. We're in the Holy Land of Wine, the birthplace of Pinot Noir, Burgundy, France. Now this is home to some of the most expensive wines in the world, some of which cost over $10,000. So wine has been made in Burgundy for millennia. It's been made so long here that historians don't even know when it started. But according to legend, Pinot Noir was found by monks in the forest right here in Burgundy. And historical records show that the Romans found wine fields here in 52 BC. That means they were making wine here for over 2,000 years. Even before that. But don't worry about this regal pedigree. We'll show you how even we were able to navigate this sub rosa wine culture. First up, the classifications of Burgundy fall into four different categories. Basically, you have the first, which is generally Burgundy or Borgogna wine. That is the lowest of the four classifications. The next one up is the village classification. The one above that is the premier cru. And then the final, the creme de la creme, is the grand cru. And this is reserved for the best plots. That's right, plots of grapes, not necessarily the wines themselves. The French actually look at the terroir, the land and the climates, and they decide that that land on the hillside, which gets the right sun exposure, the perfect amount of drainage, and has just the right amount of clay or granite or whatever they're looking for, that will get the highest ranking of Grand Cru. It is not like other vineyards where they submit the wines and they're reviewed by a collective group and then given the classification. These are based on the land alone. So that's enough about the history and the culture. Now it's time to go taste some wine. Finally, let's do it. Welcome to Burgundy. <laughs> it is our first day in the beautiful wine country of Burgundy in France. And today, what are we doing? We are tasting all of the best Burgundy wines. And right now we are in Jauvray Chambrechon. <laughs> we'll put it right there. I'm glad you made the effort to Thank do the Thank you, I tried. But we are doing a private wine tasting. We organized it uh, through a tour. We'll put some links on where you can do that. And we decided to do the upgrade to the Grand Cru tasting. So now those are the best wines. Yeah. So as we spoke before, those are the top, the creme de la creme, the numero uno. We've had our first tasting. It was fantastic. But here's a quick little fact. There are only two grapes in Burgundy, generally, like France. They have rules, but they also have exceptions. What are the grapes? Now the grapes are Pinot Noir, and the other grape is Chardonnay. Oh. When you produce Burgundy wine, you have to respect many rules. And in Burgundy, the most important rule to respect is to use 100% of Pinot Noir for reds and 100% of Chardonnay for the white. Okay. And if you use another varietal, you can't call it Burgundy wine. And of course, the grapes have to come from the Burgundy region. You must only make a red wine out of 100% Pinot Noir, and you must only make a white wine out of 100% Chardonnay. 
Now, these rules apply only 99% of the time because they have exceptions to their steadfast rules. So there are a few reds that don't follow these rules and also a few whites that don't as well. But, but for the most part, Pinot for red and Chardonnay for white. On to the next tasting. On to the next tasting. <laughs> So this next stop is not a winery, but it is a wine club where basically members all organize together their funds and their tastes so that they can taste the best wines from the entire region. So and now we're about to do that. We get to have access to this wonderful wine club through this tour. Yes. Yeah. So excited. Let's go. Let's go check it out. We are a little bit. Whoa! <laughs> Take a picture of this. When I was born, when Colette was born, this one gives me only two left of yours. <laughs> found the wine heaven. We're, I live here now. We are inside this small cave underground and this is the wine club where not only do they find the best wine, they do it in the best way. They do it in a blind tasting so that they can actually tell it's the best of the best and not just by marketing or the labels, it is just by their palate. We are about to do our own blind tasting underground in this wine cave in Burgundy. This is gonna be amazing. And now we are what? starting with whites. Now, why do you do a blind? So we're doing a blind tasting so that we're not influenced by the label and the pricing. So we're just going completely off of our palate. We don't know if these are Premier Cru or Grand Cru or just your basic burgundy wine, but I think no matter what, they're gonna be delicious. Oh, it smells like pears and it's lovely. <laughs> How much is this one? 1,179 euro. Wow. You're fancy. 900, 900, 950. 950. Wow. 2,800. That one's, wow. Yeah. <laughs> So today, our last day in Burgundy, we are in Bonn. And Bonn is? Bonn is the wine capital of Burgundy, the center of all things Burgundy. That's right. It is right in the middle of the long strip that makes up Burgundy. And it is a beautiful little town filled with great restaurants, shops, and most importantly of all, wine bars. So if you can't get out and do an official wine tour in the vineyards, and you only have enough time to come here, you can taste all of the beautiful wines in these little wine bars, hopping back and forth, to and fro, having a good old time drinking your way through. Yes, I mean, reds, whites, you can even get some champagnes here. But you can drink anything you want here, right in the capital of Bun. Yes, so we have spent the day just exploring, trying to stay out of the heat, because it's very, very hot here. And if you are going to pick a place to stay, this is the best place to stay because one, it's one of the biggest towns in all of Burgundy. So you can access all the beautiful wineries from this location and they probably have the most hotels to choose from. And it's also a great jumping off point if you want to taste wines in the Côte d'Or, a Côte de Nuit, or a Côte de Bonne. It's just a great central location overall for your trip to Burgundy. Yes.